Hello and welcome back and I hope you all had a nice break and you had a very Merry Christmas and you started the new year on the right foot. I welcome all of you back and today's lesson is going to be on prayer and we will talk about the sacraments. But before we do that, we will start with our prayer and as I promised you, um, at the end of last session that we will do the prayers in Surah now. It is time that you guys uh, learn the prayers in Surah, the language that our Lord Jesus Christ spoke. And we will start with Shemit Baba, Brona, Roha, Tkutcha, Cha'alaha, Amen. Babandi libishmeya, Baisham putchashumuch, Athia melkuthuch, how a jbonuch, Dardi libishmeya, how hambara, Halal luchma, some canal edu, Schwork tal and gnehan wuchtoyathan, Dirta mechni schwoklen to ane dem to adela ellen, Lama biritten el juraba, Elam Khalistan Mimbisha, Msabab di Yuchila Malkutha, Khela u Tishbuhtal Alam Almin. Amin. Shlama illah Maryam, Mlitha Name, Maran Immach, Mburahta Binsha, Mburhaile Perit Kasah Isha, Mat Maryam, Yim Madalaha, Salem Badalan, Achni Hatai, Dahaw Pshethad Mothan Amin. Shlama illah Maryam, Mlitha Name, Maran Immach, Mburahta Binsha, Mburhaile Perit Kasah Isha, Mat Maryam, Yim Medalaha, Salem Badalan, Achni Hatai, Dahaw Pshethad Mothan Amin. Shlama illah Maryam, Mlitha Name, Maran Immach, Mburahta Binsha, Mburhaile Perit Kasah Isha, Mat Maryam, Yim Medalaha, Salem Badalan, Achni Hatai, Dao Pshethad Mothan, Amin. Shu Hatababa, Brona, Roha, Tkutcha, Minda, Wal Abad, Abadin, Amin. Our lesson today is on prayer. And then at the end of that, we will do the um, we'll talk about the sacraments. Prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is lifting up our hearts and soul to God to adore Him, to love Him, thank Him, and ask Him for forgiveness. And beg him for graces for our soul and our body. Prayer could be you have formal prayers, which are the written ones that you can find in books, that you learn in uh, catechism, that you learn from the church, just like how we prayed uh, our Father and Hail Mary and the Glory Be. These are formal. Informal are the ones that we talk to God about. These are personal. These are things that you come up and you tell God what you feel like, what you want from him. And as you know, God is with us always. And God knows what we want all the time. But he likes us to ask him for what we want. He likes that a whole lot better. He wants us to come to him, to talk to him, to be with him, to have a conversation with him. And as you pray and as you talk to God, you also pause and you listen and you can hear God talking to you, telling you what he wants you to do what he thinks about what you said. So 
So a prayer is a way of communication with God. Prayers could be in the form of blessing and adoration when we worship. And in that we try and exalt God and confess our dependence on him. See, God like us to tell him that. We're dependent on you. Yeah, God, I know I can drive and I can get from point A to point B, but I need you to be with me, to kind of be my co-pilot, to kind of be next to me when I'm doing these things because I need you to be there to do them with me, to give me that strength, to pave the way for me so I can feel better to getting from point A to point B when you are with me. We can also do our blessings and adoration when we're at Mass. See, Mass is the highest form of prayer. Because during Mass, we're worshiping, we're adoring the Lord. We are um, presenting God as a sacrifice. And then at the end, what are we doing? We are receiving Christ, the second person of the Trinity. And also, it when you're at and, and and not just in mass, but also there are forms of prayer that you can adore God with. One of the highest ones is um, the Psalms, where we praise the Lord. The songs that we sing to God. See, God likes that. And um, another form would be the Gloria, the act of faith. These are all, you can find them in prayer books. You can find them on the internet. The church probably gave you these booklets to look at. Another form of prayer is petition. And, and petition is we come and we sit down and we ask, God for things. God, I need health. God, help me. God, lead me to where you want me to be. When we say the Lord's Prayer, we're also asking God for things. We're asking for forgiveness. Lord, do unto us. As we do to others. Uh, and the Lord's Prayer we ask God is just like, I for, forgive us as we forgive each other. Um, the act of contrition, which is one of the uh, prayers that you will have to learn when you go and make your um when you get ready to take to, to make your communion, you're going to have to go to confession. One of the prayers that we do after confession is the act of contrition. We have another form, which is intercession. Intercession is when we ask... the uh, saints to pray for us, to intervene for us. When we give masses, 
when we ask the priest to say a mass for us. All these are form of prayers. And according to Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 2634, it says intercession is a prayer of petition which leads us to pray as Jesus did. Yes, Jesus did pray. He prayed a whole lot. He prayed for others. He prayed for himself when he was on the cross. And he did ask his father to forgive others because they didn't know what they were doing. Before he was turned over, after they had the supper, he went to the Olive Garden and he prayed. He prayed so hard that he was sweating blood. And also Jesus did tell us, if you ask my father for anything in my name, he will give it to you. He also told us that ask and you shall be and it shall be given to you. Ask and you shall receive. Ask my father in my name and he will give it to you. Another form of prayer is a prayer of thanksgiving. When we thank God for whatever, all the things that he given us, if it's a favor that we asked of him and he, he delivered, we have to thank him. It is good to thank him. There's a lot that God had given us. My God, look around you. All the stuff that we have, all the things that we have, all these are from God. Shouldn't we be thanking him for that? I know all of you, when you sit down to eat, you do have a prayer and you say grace, which is good, which is good to say grace before you eat. I want you to start a new habit. And this habit is when you're done eating, say a prayer of thanks to God for the food that you already ate. Make a habit of it. Don't just pray at the beginning of the meal. Pray also at the end of the meal. I think that's more important, but we forget to do that. We forget to, to thank God for a lot of stuff. So I hope you can develop this habit And I challenge you on that. Try and remember to pray after each meal. Before and after. And you will see your life will change. You will notice some of the changes. We have another form of prayer, which is praise. Where we just praise the Lord. Glory be your name, Lord. I praise you, my Lord, for you are my God. The Catholic, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 2639, says this, Praise, Lord's God for his own sake. And gives him glory just because he is. And that's capital H, capital I. He is. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to have a reason just because. You know, when, when you guys talk to each other and when you don't have an answer for something, you just say, just because. Well, 
Praise Lord just because. As you're walking around, Lord, may your name be glorified forever. Lord, I praise you. Okay? One of the best praises for the Lord are the Psalms. If you read the book of Psalms, I know it's a little hard sometimes to understand because it's more like poetry. But a lot of these Psalms are made into songs. And just learn the song and sing it all day. I know all of you love to sing. You can rap. Take, take these songs. Learn them. And rap them. I'm sure you can do that. I don't know how to rap. I would have done that for you. But there are many songs. Some of them we sing them in church. Some of them you can buy a tape, a cassette, um, and, and learn them. Some of them are on the radio, on the religious radio, the Catholic radio. And if you ask your parents, a lot of them know a lot of songs and a lot of songs that they've learned could be in Arabic, in Chaldean, Surah. Or some of your parents may know some in English. That would be a good way too to praise the Lord. And I hope you guys just get into these habits of prayer. See, prayer doesn't have to be very formal. It doesn't have to be always in church. You could pray anywhere that you are. And you could do it sitting, you could do it standing, you can do it sleeping. As long as you could do it in reverence and all your attention is to God. So please try and get into the habit of prayer. You can recite the rosary. You can do the divine mercy at three o'clock. You can go on the internet and you can find a lot of prayers. I have an app that I have downloaded called um, Laudat. Oh my God, it has so many, so many things in there. And you can do the prayers of the hours, the three o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, nine o'clock, 12 o'clock midday, and then again, six o'clock, and oh, three o'clock also, three o'clock, six o'clock, 12 o'clock at night. And the Lord wants you to pray when people sleep. When people are asleep, when it's bedtime, and you wake up just to say a prayer, do you know how important that is to God? Do you know how much God loves when we do that? When you wake up in the middle of the night to get a sip of water, to use the bathroom, sit down for two minutes and pray. I don't care what you, what you say. Give two minutes to the Lord and pray. Say something or just sit quietly and just think of God. Close your eyes. Sit there. Close your eyes and think of nothing but God. Jesus, the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter which one of the Trinity you think about. And just be quiet. And just be quiet and think of that, and God will reward you. I hope this was good enough for you, and that will put you in the mood of prayer. Now, I know we still have a few more minutes, and we will talk about the sacraments. There are seven sacraments that the church give us. And we have to go through some of them. We don't all have to do all of them, 
We don't all need to do that, but some of them are a must for all of us. These sacraments are divided into three sections. You get the initiation, healing, and sacraments of service. The initiations are sacrament of baptism, sacrament of comfort, confirmation, and the Eucharist. These, that mean we are part of the Catholic Church. We are part of God's family. When we do these three, of course, you all know baptism. You all have been baptized. You don't even remember that because you were a baby when you got baptized. Confirmation. Many people get that when they are like in second grade or so. The Chaldean Church always give us our confirmation. Confirmation is the Holy Spirit. It's giving us the Holy Spirit. Baptism wipes out our original sin, the sin that we inherited from Adam and Eve when they broke God's command. Confirmation gives us the Holy Spirit. It strengthens us by the Holy Spirit. And we get many fruits of the Holy Spirit with that. And that in the Chaldean Church is given at the same time as we're baptized. After they baptize us with the holy water, they'll bring in the holy oil and the priest dips his finger in there and give us a cross on our forehead. We are all baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we are all given the confirmation when we got baptized. When we are by the second grade usually, we go in and make our communion, which many of you are doing right now, getting ready for that. And that is when we receive the Eucharist, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is not an imitation. This is not a um, copycat kind of thing. This is an actual blood and body of our Lord Jesus Christ after we present our Lord as a sacrifice in Mass, we do get some of that sacrifice. Then we have sacraments of healing. Sacraments of healing is our penance. That is when we go and make our confession before we take our communion. And when we are sorry for our sins, we are healed through the power of our Lord and God. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are healed of our sins. We are healed of our trespasses. And we become pure, heart, mind, and soul. So when we go in to take our communion, we are clean inside out. Another, sa another um, sacrament of the healing is the healing of the sick. And that is when there is somebody who is sick, what do we do? We call a priest. And they go to the hospital and pray over them and give them the sacrament. So these are the sacraments of healing. And then we have sacrament of service. Sacrament of service 
is the sacrament of marriage. Marriage is a service to each other. You serve the Lord. You serve the church. You serve your family. You start the family and you serve that family. Because that's your vocation in life. To be a parent. To be a husband. To be a wife. And you start that when husband and wife or when a man and woman are about to get married. They go to church and they have the church rites. And that sacrament is given to them. And they are married in the eyes of the church according to the law of God. And they become one. And they start a family. And that is what their vocation in life would become as parents. To raise a good family, to raise good children, and in hopes that we can meet again up in heaven with the Lord. A second service sacrament is the ordination and that is a sacrament of, of the holy order and that is when somebody becomes a priest a nun a shamasha a deacon and their service their other vocation is not just to their families but it's also to God's family, to the church's family, to their people. Just like when you have a doctor, you have to go to school and learn how to become a doctor, a teacher, go to school, get certified before they can come and teach at the schools. Same thing with our priests and our nuns and our shamashe. They all have to go in and study and learn. They come back to the church and um, receive the holy orders. Could be from another priest that will, will be at that mass. Um, could be a bishop. It might be a patriarch. All these can, but you have to be an ordained priest already to ordain another priest. In our church, in the Chaldean church, usually we have um, the bishop or the archbishop that does that. If they're not available, well, another priest can do it. I'll go back to um, prayers. You know, there are some, and I'm going to read this out to you. According to Catechism of the Catholic Church, 1117, there are fruits for prayers. And the fruit of prayers are this. They strengthen our faith. Nourish. our body, increase our love for God, keep us humble, wow, merits, grace, and atone for sins. So they give us graces and they give us atonement for our sins. All that we get in prayer. I hope that this becomes useful to you. And I hope that you will start a new life of prayer. And I wish you well. And may you go in peace and God bless you wherever you may be, you and your families. 
And always remember, God loves you no matter what. Good day.